Hi, welcome to the lesson where we're going to be creating a grid structure. So what you see here being output, this is all what we're going to be creating in this lesson using the CSS grid in order to create a dynamic grid using JavaScript. So we can adjust the number of columns. We can also adjust the number of rows and our output will adjust to match. So I've created it to five columns. Uh, you can also do nine columns if you want and everything will adjust accordingly. And also you can make less rows as well. And this is all done using the CSS grid and some JavaScript code, creating elements on the fly using the document create method. I've got the editor opened on the left hand side, the browser window on the right hand side, and the dev tools, because I'm using Chrome, opened on the bottom right hand side. So I've gone ahead and created index.html. So this is going to be our main HTML file that we're going to be creating and creating the whole game board in. We've created also a JS file, I've called it game one. So let's add in the HTML. And we're gonna need a couple elements, so creating an element within the body area. And first one is gonna be the main, so we'll give it a class of game area. So this is gonna be where we can add in all of the contents, our main game area. And then next tag that we're gonna add in is gonna be linking out to the game1.js file. So we'll link to that. And then within the title, let's update this to call it, and we'll call it JavaScript game. And we'll apply some styling afterwards as well. So we don't see anything yet on the page. Uh, so let's open up the JavaScript and we're gonna select the main page element where we've got the game area. So we're gonna call it an object game area and then using the document query selector and go ahead and select the element with a class of game area. So that should allow us to select that main game area. And you can try it out into the console just to make sure that you've selected the element properly. So we wanna set up where we're gonna have the game play. We need to have the main scoring area as well as a button to launch the game. So let's set those up. And I'm actually gonna create a JavaScript function that's gonna allow us to really easily create some elements as we're gonna be creating a whole bunch of page elements within this lesson. So creating element, or let's call it create L. And it's gonna take in a few arguments. So that's gonna be the parent object element that we're gonna be attaching it to. Uh, we're also gonna to need to know the element type. We can add in some HTML content and then the element class. So those are the arguments that we're gonna pass in and this is gonna allow us to easily construct a page element. So if we wanna create a score area, we can use the document and actually we're gonna use our function, which is gonna be the create element. So we need to have the parent that we're, the parent element that we're adding it to and that's gonna be game area. Uh, the next one is gonna be the element type. So let's create a div, any HTML content. And right now I'll just write score into there. And then the class that we want it to attach. And this is also gonna be a string value called score. So I created a function and let's go ahead and we'll generate the element. So using the JavaScript and using the document create element, let's go ahead and we're gonna create an element by whatever that specific element type is. So this is the same idea as if we were to create an element in JavaScript. So if we want to create a div, we would use the document create element method and then specify that we want to create a div. Within the div, we can add in some inner HTML. And so this can just say hello world. And for the div, let's uh, take the class list and we're gonna add a class value. And we'll just call it my class. And then lastly, let's uh, select the parent element and that's gonna be the game area. And using the append, Let's append that div to the game area. So that gives us the element on the page and we're gonna do the same thing within the function. So when you go into your code, you can see that we've got the main game area object that we selected and created a brand new element. So I'm just given a class of my class. This is the text content and this is where the element is gonna sit on the page. And that's gonna also associate that to this object called div 
that we can reference within the code. So instead of having to do that multiple times, we've created a function that's going to do the same thing. So we're creating an element, and within the element, let's set the inner HTML. So that's coming from the argument HTML. The element type is coming from the arguments as well within the function. And now let's add in using the parent, and we can do append just as we did up here, and append the element to the page. And then also for the element before we append it, and the order actually doesn't matter because we're still referencing that same element object. So let's uh, use the class list, and we can add the element class in the function. So what that does is that's going to do the same thing that those four lines of code did, except we're doing it within a function that we can call to and we can generate those elements. Uh, so one of the things to note here is that when we do try to write score for the score object, we're going to get undefined. So we're not referencing it to the element. And the way to do that is to return the element that we created. So you can do it a number of ways where you can have a return on the element. And so now when I type in score, we're going to reference that element that we created. And the shorter way to do it is to do an append child. So an append doesn't have a callback, but append child does have a callback of the element that we're appending. So this will automatically refer to L. And when we use append child, it's going to provide that element within the return. So we can save ourselves one line of code. And now when we type in score, we're going to be able to access that element. So creating that element objects is going to be really easy now that we've got the function in place in order to do that. So we've got a main score area, and let's uh, create an output area. So this is where we're going to construct our grid area. So this is also being attached to game area. Uh, this is going to also be a div. And it's not going to have any content, so we're just going to leave that blank. And the class that we want to apply to it, let's apply a class of output to it. So that gives us a blank area on the screen where we can build our game board. So that we're going to deposit the game board within this output element. I'll move this content, and I'll keep it within the source code, uh, but we're not going to be using it. It's just going to be commented out. So once we've selected and we've created the element, we're ready to build our game board. So let's create a function that will generate a grid structure that we can use in order to present our game content. So create board, and then we'll create a function. So we're going to reference and invoke that function. And then here we can create the game board within this function. And we're going to need some parameters because we want to create this as dynamically as possible. Uh, so with JavaScript, the more dynamic that you can make your code, uh, the more flexible you are if you have to make some adjustments to it. So we're going to make our whole game grid dynamic. So setting a value for x, this is going to be how many squares we've got horizontally across. And then y will let us provide dynamic on how many squares we're going to have vertically across. So we're going to need those two parameters in order to create our game board. And within the game board, we're going to be using CSS grid. Uh, so we need to know how many cells we're creating in total. So that's going to be game X times game Y. So that's going to give us how many cells we want to create. Let's create the loop. So set I to zero. And then while I is less than the total number of cells that we're creating, increment I by one. And now let's add those elements to the page. So we'll create those elements. And we'll just call it temp. We're going to use the same function that we did before to construct the page elements. And this time the parent is going to be the output element as we're depositing it within the output element. The element type is going to be a div. And for the HTML that we're outputting, so I'm going to use the backticks, the template literals, and we'll output whatever we've got for the value of i. So that way it will increment and we'll start it at i, I plus 1. So that will provide the i plus 1. And then for each one of these, let's create a class of blocks. So we'll set that and create the class of blocks. So right now we don't have any grid structure, but we do have all of the elements created. 
So we need to add in that grid structure for the page elements. So let's uh, do that. And we're going to do that with the CSS grid. Uh, so we need to apply some styling to the parent. And we can apply the styling. Uh, so it's a you can apply the styling with JavaScript as well, but it's going to be a little bit easier within the style sheet. So let's go ahead and update the values for this property of, uh, for the class of output and using the display property. And let's set the value for the display property to grid and update the width. So we're going to do 80, the viewport width. So that it's, once again, it's uh, more dynamic and it will scale. And we'll do 80 viewport height. And set the margin to be auto. So this will automatically center that content. You can also add a border so that we can see the main container. So set it as border red. And let's uh, set the padding to be zero. So that's our main container. And we don't have... Uh, so, so we need to also set for the elements as well. Uh, so let's, uh, since we've added a class of box to them, we can do a text align and we'll center align the text. Also, let's do a border one pick solid. And let's set that as a light kind of black color there. So that gives us all of the page elements. So we need to apply the additional styling to the parent. And this is going to be the property that we're going to set on the parent. So we know how many cells we need to go across. So we need to just repeat and create the grid template columns. So output and style. Let's uh, set the proper property for the style property. And the style that we're setting is going to be the grid template columns. And you can do this fairly easily with the CSS grid, and we do want them to repeat. And the repeat is going to be, we can actually use the template literals because we do need to have that dynamic value in the output here within the repeat. So let's just save that. I'm also going to change the view to word wrap. This is going to be a long line of code so that we can see it uh, within the editor within the same line. So we need to know what the value of game X is. And that's going to tell us how many columns that we're creating. And then we just comma separate it out before we close it off and we do one FR. So let's see how that looks. So magically, uh, that creates our grid and that's using the CSS grid. So with JavaScript, you can create these grids fairly easily and dynamically using the CSS grid. So that gave us the number of columns, which was five, and the number of rows, which is four. And remember here, we're incrementing them by one. So if you were to adjust this number to eight and this number to nine, that would give you, again, eight columns by nine rows. So this can be any set of values, and the grid will automatically adjust to accommodate that. I'm also going to remove out the red border around the main outside part as we don't need that. And let's apply some additional styling. we us apply the box sizing so that in case we are using any of the borders, we don't throw off the structure of our elements, so our page elements. So box sizing and set the border box. I'm applying it to all the elements with the asterisks. And there we go. So now we've got our main grid area. And we can also, as we're creating the elements on the grid, we can set them to be uh, different background colors. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to set it to either be a background color of red or background color of black. So as we create the elements, it's going to return the element back into temp. And we can just have a condition on I if there is a remainder um, when we're dividing it by two, then we can set the background color. So using the temp style background color and let's set this background color to be red and that actually should be an equal sign so that gives us the background color of red and we'll get this checkerboard type pattern if we have uh, an odd number of columns so that's going to return back this checkerboard type pattern 
And then let's uh, set the other background color to be black and we'll change the font to be white as well. So this will give us a full checkerboard type output that we can work with and create. So set the color and the color will be white so that we can see the text. So again, it's fully dynamic. So if you do make any changes, so if you want more columns, you can easily update those and have those being displayed within this checkerboard type format and they will automatically adjust to accommodate. Create your JavaScript game board and you're going to be ready to move on to the next lesson. We're going to create more interaction within the page elements that are created dynamically.